Woolworths boss Brad Banducci has quit quite suddenly, abruptly. He says, oh, no, 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 I haven't been forced out. Heavens no, it's simply time for someone else. And that time had to be right now, quick. But that timing sure does make him look a loser. And uh, it's a warning to the woke bosses out there who've been too arrogant for too long. Well, right now, shoppers are dancing on Brad's grave. Would you like to see the new boss do? Look after their customers more. And, yeah, go down and stop ripping us off. Oh, I just hope it makes it more, you know, like friendly for, for us normal people who do shopping, you know, rather than going into all this political stuff as well. More affordability for your fam young families. Yeah. To not um, keep scamming people and to have fair pricing and actually pass on what we're, the consumers are paying to their providers as well. I can understand their anger. I mean, Banducci is the man who had Woolies promote Labor's voice, pushed it on shoppers, and then banned Australia Day. No posters, no Australia Day mer merch. And then what about its prices? Now, Woolworths' latest results this week show it's actually increased its profit margin on food sales to 6%. That's double the margin that the two bi biggest food retailers in Britain make. Double. So there are now two inquiries into alleged supermarket price gouging going on, one by Senate Committee, one by the Competition Watchdog. And I reckon that's rattled Banducci. Because I... <laughs> and plus he's arrogant. He's still arrogant, though. He turns up... I reckon he ignored advice, right, to shut up. He instead thought, well, I'll go on the ABC uh, Four Corners show and make them, because I'm pretty smart, see all this my way. Instead, they asked him a few questions, he lost his rag, he got rude, and he stormed out. So Sorry, a thanks. former head of the Competition Commission he says... Lives, his words are that retired, we have... by the way. I, I don't think you would impugn his integrity and his understanding of competition law. I'm just saying the world has got much more competitive. He retired 18 months ago. He's not... OK, let's... Well, can we take that out? Is that OK? I should... I mean, he, he is retired, but I, I shouldn't have said that, Angus. Are, you, are we going to leave it in there if we are? Well, I mean, if, if we're on the record. You said it. I mean, you know, let's let's move on. But, yeah. Yeah, no, um, I'm, I think I'm done, guys. Uh, you know, I, I, I do this with good intent. You know, I don't do this with bad intent. No. You're walking out, really? No, no, no. Can we just talk to no, no, Brad for a second? Just, the media guy, they're freaking. <laughs> Joining me are Cameron Milner, former Chief of Staff to Labor leader Bill Shorten, our Director of GXO Strategies, and Michael Costler, former New South Wales Labor Treasurer. Now, Michael, of course, Banducci actually did a great job for Woolworths shareholders. He made them a lot of money. But the way he's left has cost them a lot of love. Well, that, that's true, Andrew. But look, um, I, I, don't, I don't blame the CEOs or the companies here. The, the issue is about competition policy. And, you know, inquiries by the government, no matter, or the parliament, are not going to solve this problem. And in fact, uh, I thought the most extraordinary thing, other than that uh, terrible media performance, was the comments from the CEO from Coles, who made some claim that because we had a third of the population and 30% more of the footprint, that somehow. Uh, they should be making more profits. I mean, that's an argument for our costs, to, their costs to be higher and there'd be lower profits. So we've fundamentally got a problem with competition and the government needs to address it. And I think the stuff they've got to look at is, you know, zoning and all the barriers to entry for other supermarkets. Um, in terms of, um, you know, uh, the, the Woolworths CEO, I, I think the board needs to go before you can claim a victory on um, woke um, capitalism um, because <laughs> they would have supported that as well. We're working on you... that. Michael, come on, give me time. We're working on that, <laughs> mate. But Cameron, you're, you know, part of your consultancy work is giving a little bit of crisis management and tough love to executives who seek out your excellent advice. You must have looked at that interview and thought, who the hell told him this was a great idea? What? What a train wreck, what a train wreck. But Banducci is so arrogant. I mean, he wants to take Woolworths woke while celebrating his customers going broke. Mm. I mean, this guy, basically, on the day the gouging inquiry was announced, uh, went out and cancelled Australia Day. That was his response. Coles slashed chicken and meat by 20% and a whole range of other you know, grocery items. That was their response. But he cancelled Australia Day. So, look, I'm glad he's gone, and I'm really hoping that Woolworths comes back to being a grocery store that looks after customers. Mm. Yeah, he was boasting that uh, the fuss about the Australia Day thing uh, didn't hurt sales, but I think it, it cost them. It was like uh, 
you know, the, the, the one shoe falls. The next time you stuff up, well, he did. And so, bang, there's no love for him. And you heard the shopper say uh, she didn't like the politics. So beware. Exactly. Uh, Michael, uh, the, the news today, real wages over the year are up by 0.1%. Is the government now out of a hole and uh, sunshine ahead? Happy days? Oh, not at all, Andrew. I mean, look, um, that, that was a, a good number. You, you, you can't d deny that. You'd rather have it where it is than um, the alternative. Oh, yes. However, you've got to you've got to remember. I mean, when you drill down, you see a lot of this is um, due to public sector wages and um, you know the, the the Fair Work Commission cases on minimum wages. Now, all, all of that's good, except the, the issue here is, for me, productivity. Unless I see an alignment between the productivity figures and real wages, they're not sustainable. And, you know, it's easier to get uh, public sector wages up because you're using other people's money and you don't care about productivity. In the private sector, it's much harder. And if it's in the non-regulated component of the private sector, then we've really got to look to see what's happening to wages or else, um, you know, we're going to have real problems with productivity going forward. Yeah, you described another Anthony Albanese Taylor Swift tickets uh, a scam, you know. As you say, it's very easy to bump up wages if you're in charge of the government purse strings and handed out, hand over fist to public servants. Mind you, the state government's doing exactly the same, the Labor ones. Uh, Cameron Milner, what do you make of uh, where, where this economy is going? It, it was, it, you know, yes, a rise in real wages is good, but the rest of it, I'm not sure. Well, it's 0.1%, so it's a very small um, uh, uh, increase. No doubt a good increase. But people are suffering a genuine cost of living crisis. I mean, there's 12 interest rate rises. Rents have gone up. Electricity has gone up. Petrol has gone up. Everything's gone up. And wages, real wages have gone up by 0.1%. Well, I'm expecting Anthony Albanese to sort of say, oh, everything's OK now. No cost of living crisis all over. That's, of course, poppycock, uh, because people are living a real cost of living crisis and the 0.1% though good statistically isn't the reality on the ground for so many families who are suffering out there.